Okay, hi, I'm Sandra Brown. I'm here to talk to you about how to dye wool for the, um, the fine cut hooking uh, that we like to do, especially with flowers. And this is a follow-up uh, video to the Rug Hooking Magazine September-October issue of 2013. And uh, we're going to start with a piece of white wool that has been soaking in Synthropol uh, for at least an hour. I think it's good to pre-soak the wool uh, for some period of time. Uh, it's going to accept the dyes uh, more easily. And I'm going to lay this in a pan so that there's it can lay totally flat and there's no wrinkles in it. Now, remember when we um, decide the length of the wool, we are going with the assumption that it takes four to five times a length of a piece of wool to fill a given area. So if your area is five inches, uh, you are going to need at least a 20 inch piece of wool that uh, when you're painting it like this or doing casserole dyeing that uh, will be long enough to hook up to fill five inches. If it's uh, shorter than that then you'll do your hooking and your wool will run out before you've finished the motif. So in this case I have a uh, 15 inch piece of wool uh, because it's basically the one that fits the pan nicely without being wrinkled on either end. And um, I'm going to uh, start applying the dyes in a uh, what's called a casserole dyeing technique. Uh, this was uh, Edna Fleming's book in the early 1960s that talked about how to do this. And um, uh, I've modified it to use pro chemical dyes. The uh, one I'll start with is a uh, grasshopper. Uh, number 719 and um, basically what I'm going to do is spoon this wool with this grasshopper color which is almost a um, chartreuse green. I'm going to carry it almost up to the top but not quite. Some people like to use a uh, brush when they're doing this as well and um, that can be used. Um, personally, I kind of like the spoon because you can pick up from the sides and keep reapplying. And you, the bottom of the spoon makes a good scoop here to or push your... So, um, I have made these dye solutions up with 1 8 teaspoon of dry dye in 1 half cup of water. This is my this is what we call your original dye solution, which when you read the article in Rug Hooking Magazine, I call um, the ODS, the original dye solution. So here we are, uh, just an eighth of an inch of wool mixed with a half a cup of water, and I'm basically spooning this on now. I'm going to light the fire. I'm doing this outside. It's um, I don't know. It's just easier to film I think um, and I'm going to keep this wool nice and straight. If I had wrinkles in it you can see where the dye would start to collect in the crevices and then I wouldn't get a nice even effect so whatever you do it has to lay I find that it works better if it lays flat. I don't want them on too high because it does take a certain amount of time for it to to take up and uh, these are uh, acid dyes so that the final um, setting of the dyes is a combination both of heat and an acid. I tend to prefer um, uh, citric acid which I've made up into a solution here and I'll be putting it on last. So as the heat, as this piece of wool starts to get warmer and warmer, it'll start to take up the dye and this is my chance to kind of play around with the colors. If I want one side to be a little bit darker, well then I can spread a little bit of uh, dye uh, along that side. Next I'm going to start with um, Saffron, Prochem Saffron number 228. And that's going to go on the top third that hasn't gotten any dye yet. 
this is a fairly intense dye. So what I'm going to do is, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to take a couple tablespoons of this and mix it with water. So I've diluted the original dye solution and I'm going to start spreading that yellow along the top. That's top, down the sides. Just keep smooshing it in dragging it down. You can see some of it going in the water on the sides which you can then scoop up and put over the wool. Now this is getting a little warm down here because, and I know that because the um, um, wool is starting to bubble. So I'm going to turn it down, hopefully not off, and um, go back to putting the more of this um, yellow uh, orange color on the top. This is called saffron. It's one of the Pro-Chem uh, pre-mixed dyes, which are kind of nice because the, they've kind of done the work for you. I think I would like that to be a little more yellow. So I'm going to take a couple more tablespoons. A little more water. I'm just going to keep a spoon in this on here. Remember when we're dyeing wool, even any kind of wool, um, you want to go for an effect that's a bit brighter, a bit um, more colorful, more intense than what you want to end up with because first of all um, the dyes haven't all taken into the wool yet. They haven't uh, they've just started to. And secondly, um, in this case, the, um, well, in any case, when it dries, it dries lighter. So, um, there we have a really pretty kind of green at the bottom. I could stop right here. Um, there's certainly some flowers, leaves, uh, etc., that I would like to be able to hook cut the strips this way, start hooking from the green end to the light end, and all my colors would be built in. But we're going to move next to burgundy, um, and I think this is going to be a little bit intense too, so I'm going to mix this with um, some water, just to be on the safe side. You can always add, it's like salt, you can always add, you can't take away tablespoons and a little extra water here. I'm going to run this down the sides. Smooshing, moving it back and forth. You see, I, it, it's uh, kind of sitting in this water along here, but that's good. Down the bottom. back and forth, up and down. I could easily do it on this side. I think I'll leave it off and just give myself a piece of wool that has red on one side, red, darker red at the bottom, and going to a nice gold orange at the top. And you can see how the addition of the red, of uh, the burgundy, is affecting the um, the colors that are already there. It, it's a beautiful orange rusty up here coming into a deeper rust red and down here a more muted red. So I can spoon these walls over or uh, spoon the uh, dye from the side over if I want. Kind of get a little bit more going in there. Okay, so 
so that is starting to set. And I think I'm going to darken the bottom end just a little bit more. And this I'm going to use um, mahogany, Prochem Mahogany 508. It's a very intense dye. Um, and it will give me the really dark end I want at the bottom. Generally speaking, we want our wool to be, when we do casserole dyeing, we want the wool to be dark at the bottom, light in the, or medium in the middle, and light at the top. Um, that means that when we're hooking shadow lines and things, we could put the dark end, the dark is already built into our wool. It's not necessarily it's not necessary that you would do this. I could put a dark end on that too, for instance. In fact, I could probably put the uh, mahogany on this end and leave this the light and use it for a plum that had a uh, sort of a red, slightly chartreuse highlight. I'm gonna keep adding a little bit more here, even make it darker than I think I want it because in fact, I know it's going to dry quite a bit lighter. So I'm spooning and trying to keep this bubbling down. See that green that we started with is almost gone. In fact, it has turned to something resembling uh, a true chartreuse here in the middle. last color and this is when we go across the color wheel what I've done to begin with is been pretty much stay in one sector of the color wheel uh, the um, grasshopper was from here the saffron was from here the burgundy was from here maybe over in this area but now I'm going to cross over the color wheel. and when we do that we're reaching for the complementary and uh, because the wool is hot, it's going to take this dye very quickly now. And um, I want to make a slightly blue streak running down the middle of this. So this is blue spruce 495. No, I'm sorry, blue spruce 721. This is blue spruce 721. And I am going to run a bead of this down the side here and start moving it in, slopping us up here. See how that's blending in nicely? We get just a little whisper of another color here, which makes it so much more interesting to work with. reason we do casserole dyeing is we have a, say for instance, we have a rug with a whole bunch of motifs that are the same. I have a, a rug with uh, seven day lilies to do, and these are the colors that I want on those day lilies. Um, so I can take for the second piece, same size, lay it right over the top of this one. and repeat the dye that I just did, the whole dye system. In that case, I'll start with the <clears throat> grasshopper again. Not quite up to the top. See how the spoon scoops this out of the way for you? It kind of gives you a chance to move the, the dye around a bit more, I think, than a brush does. Now the second piece is accepting dye both from uh, what I'm putting on on the top and what's coming up from below, the piece below. I want to be sure and put these dyes in the same places that I did before because I don't want to 
subvert the dyeing uh, that I just did below it. And I'm trying to get pieces that are somewhat similar, well, as close in, in color as I possibly can, actually. Um, <clears throat> If you were, you could also use, I'm using white wool, but I could just as easily be using uh, a colored wool, a pastel, and uh, the late Helen Connolly, who did beautifully dyed um, flowers, uh, recommended that when you did this, you had um, several different pastels plus white and um, in your um, dye solution so that you could, um, or in your, in your um, dyeing pot here so that you could get the darker versions of it that you need for the petals and the, and the flowers that are in the back. Okay, we're going on to uh, saffron. Splash of water. And that goes on the top. Spooning smooshing, getting this all nicely moved around. Do not, in, in uh, Edna Fleming's book, um, Casserole Dyeing, uh, she recommended, because she was using the old aniline dyes, she recommended putting your um, vinegar in this cup of dye solution. I, I do not, absolutely do not do that. It will take too fast into the wool. It won't get into the deep part of the fiber and you'll end up with something that um, has a white core which is the last thing we want. Okay, so I'll put on pretty much all of the saffron. Okay, then we're back to the burgundy again. Spooning that down the side. Along the bottom. You could keep adding pieces of wool, one right after another here. In fact, you could go up to, you know, 15 to 20 layers of wool um, if you wanted. Uh, it is labor intensive, as you can see. You have to be sitting here, standing here watching and spooning and, and redirecting the uh, dyes as the wool is taking them up but um, it's one way to get a, a batch of wool out of one dye pot. Um, and the ones on the bottom will clearly be darker than the ones on the top, the last ones that you do. But again, that's useful for the um, wool that's at the back of a motif. You know, the back petals on the, your hooked rug are um, always uh, a little bit darker. They're supposed to be a little bit darker than the ones in the front. So the front petals, I would use the top pieces of wool. The back petals, I would use the ones that are on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to do the um, mahogany again on the bottom. Get that really dark end that I want. Whether I use it or not when I'm hooking, it's good to have it because otherwise then you have to reach for another piece of wool to make those really dark little spots and uh, shadow lines that you need. This time I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, acid solution on the sides not on the wool, it'll just create a white streak right down the middle. Uh, and then start kind of gently spooning this in over the wool. And it should start setting up faster. See, I can take the spoon and sort of scoop dyes off that I don't want to be there. The other thing we talked about in the article was how this dark, this edge of a piece of torn wool takes up so much more dye than, you know, the, the middle does. Um, and that, a lot of people cut that edge off and throw it away. In the article we talked about how, how handy they are for um, doing, showing shadow lines and edges of things. Okay, so I think I'm ready for the blue spruce. 
You can see the water is starting to clear because I've put in the, uh, the acid. I'll keep that wet on that side a little bit. Kind of a spoon and scrape kind of method here to get that um, dye where I want it. So I have one side that's predominantly red, and then I have the uh, the uh, nice uh, blue spruce uh, green coming down the other side here. This will lighten up considerably. You can see how the water is clearing now because the acid that I added is uh, setting the dye. Now if I thought that that was too bright on that end, I might take some of this colored water here and spread it over. Toning it down a bit. I don't want the, dye, the water to completely disappear. Add your water from the side, don't add it on top of the wool because it really, um, until the dye is completely set, it will um, create a washout area. Okay, I think I'm going to pull it just a tiny little bit more of my grasshopper here in the middle. Down here. It's very pretty, the colors that are created, where the, you know, a couple of colors meet. Um, great. So, the water is cl almost cleared. I'm going to let that uh, simmer for a little bit longer. Um, I may just put a tiny bit more mahogany on the bottom here. Like I said, I want a nice dark edge. Um, best to, if you're doing this for one project, it really is best to, to um, do them all at once, one, uh, one time, because it's, uh, it's really difficult trying to replicate things <laughs> the second time, especially if a few days have passed. Now once the water is cleared, I'll probably, uh, in the pile, especially if the pile were high, um, I would, I'm going to take this and flip it over so that the other side of the wool pile uh, gets uh, a good uh, heat up, a heating as well. how much darker the bottom one is. Now that will draw it two shades lighter, but um, and, and will still be a beautiful piece of wool. The bottom one, the very bottom one, is the one that gets the darkest. But as you can see, It's a beautiful piece of wool. Good. Thank you. Okay, so here are our finished pieces of wool. The one on the left is obviously the darker one that was on the bottom. And uh, that's uh, not only going to happen, but uh, it's intentional. 
uh, we can make really good use of that for the darker side of a motif. Uh, again, the petals, the leaves, and the back of the motif are typically darker than the ones in the front, which would be receiving more light and um, closer to the viewer. Now, interestingly enough, these turned out to be fairly dark um, because I was using um, quite a lot of dye. If I had decided I wanted them paler, I would have just maybe cut the amount of dye in half. I would have added more water when I was mixing up the original dye solution, and I would have ended up with a lighter piece of wool. These will dry d uh, lighter, uh, at least by one if not two values. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see that um, here we were sitting next to this beautiful coleus and uh, almost couldn't have come up with a better match to the colors that are here. I started with an eighth of a teaspoon of my various dyes in a half a cup of boiling water to dissolve the dry dye and I like to keep all of those dye solutions at the same quantity though so it's either an eighth of a teaspoon or it could be a sixteenth of a teaspoon if you want to go for a paler piece of wool but um, whatever colors you're using measure out the same amount of dry dye it's easier to keep records uh, of what of uh, your dye day if you keep the dye solution um, equivalent and of course now when we uh, are going to use this wool we're going to cut it into strips this is the long way and as we hook we'll be picking up all of these colors now um, we can also show you how this would work with a, a daylily this daylily is a perfect example of what we um, what casserole dyeing is really useful for um, because we have a we have changes in color, changes in value as you come from the center of the flower out, and we try to build those into the piece of wool. So that, and again, if I was cutting this in strips, I could start with the lighter color in the center and move out, just hook right out to the uh, darker uh, tips. Um, I could use the pieces on the extreme side for the little edges where the petal overlaps the pedal behind it.